We're going. Here we go. Yes, I'm ready. Good evening. I'd like to call the Winton Woods Board of Education regular meeting to order. It is 6.30 p.m. on Monday, April 27th. I'd like you to please turn all your electronic devices to silent and then please rise with me and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Seymour, would you please call the roll? Dr. Johnson? Here. Mrs. Burns? Here. Mr. Pennycuff? Present. Mr. Cleary? Mrs. Miranda? Present. Thank you. The first item on our agenda this evening is our district honors, recognitions, gifts, and introductions. Mr. Superintendent, you have the floor. Thank you, Ms. Super President. <laughs> um, I'd like to uh, have, is Miss Labmeyer here? Yeah. Thank you. All right, I'm happy the teacher's here. Come on up. <laughs> so they gave me this real daunting task to uh, go around and choose um, artwork, and it's called the Superintendent's Art Gallery. And as you walk through the halls to choose the artwork, it's always little kids following behind you, <laughs> making sure that you pick theirs. <laughs> and I'm not intimidated, but it, it is a kind of real hefty group of like thousands of kids following you around. <laughs> so I'd like to um, first recognize Miss Lapmeyer for being such an incredible art teacher. Thank you. And second, uh, the superintendent selection is Andorra Roberts here. Come on. All right. We'll come back. Maybe they'll show up. All right. For the principal selection, Luke Mansu. Okay. Honorable mention, Jesus Lopez, Diaris Miller, and Angelina Rubio. All right. I still would like to share, um, especially and Andorra Roberts. Uh, I believe Andorra's in what grade? First grade. First grade. Wow. Is there artwork up there? Uh, First grade. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Everybody can see it. Oh. Wow. That was a feeling of Okay, this is a small test. If you had that kind of talent when you were in first grade, raise your hand. Okay. All right. Fantastic. We're going to save that for you. We're going to put it in a frame. And we're going to keep it here until you graduate from Winton Woods. Is that okay? All right. All right. Thank you. Is Miss Mary Grace Balding here? All right. You could represent Miss Balding. Come back up. <laughs> So the first award, and this is the elementary school, the superintendent selection was Luis Hernandez. You see his work? Now that one kind of got to me when I was there because the eyes kind of follow you around. <laughs> so I had to pick it. I didn't have a choice. All right. The principal selection is Sophia Hutchinson. Sophia. All right. This is Denny. If you recognize these kids coming in, we'll take this show right back over again. Okay? All right. And then the honorable mention is Solomon Farrell and Leela Gordon.
pull up that beautiful artwork. I think it's, it's hard working with watercolors, but I think she managed to get it done. This was Mr. Pharrell. Mr. Pharrell, wow. Ms. Lawyer. Our next section is the Kiwanis Characters Key Award. And this first award is uh, going to be presented to Cecilia Dempsey. Is she here? Okay, I'm going to read about her anyway. Good. All right. Okay, Cecilia Dempsey is a kindergarten student at Primary South. Her teacher, Stacy Bannix, states, Cecilia shows integrity by telling the truth at school. She is very honest and wants to help others always be their best. We live in a world where integrity isn't always talked about at least it's not talked about nearly enough. We live in a world where the end justifies the means has become an acceptable thought far for far too many. For Cecilia, she has shown integrity by doing the right thing at all times and in all circumstances, whether or not anyone is watching. I applaud her for her efforts at such an early age as this trait that most of us aspire to achieve but rarely accomplish. And that's written by her principal, Ms. Tanya Bray. The next award goes to Jasmine Campbell. Must be the flu going on around or something. All right. Okay, so Jasmine's award is based on this whole idea about integrity. And she is a student of the month for Winton Woods High School. This is what her counselor says about her. I like to describe Jasmine as the perfectly well-rounded student. She is very active in her school. This year alone, she has served as a secretary for our school's key club and as the secretary of our school's astronomy club. Jasmine has provided over 20 hours of peer-to-peer -peer tutoring in our Winton Woods High School Academic Help Center. She has also completed over 100 hours of community service during her high school career. For example, Jasmine has served with Matthew 25 Ministries, coordinating supplies to be sent overseas for disaster victim, victims. She also has volunteered at Winton Woods, a Chinese Dehan summer camp teaching exchange students American games and customs. Jasmine has become a prominent leader at Winton Woods High School through playing an active role in many clubs and activities, as well as leading by example in the classroom and or the lecture halls at Miami University. Jasmine is a model student. She has taken a rigorous course load with honors courses, advanced placement courses, and post-secondary courses as well as courses in our Academy of Global Studies. She currently has a 3.607 grade point average and is ranked 25th in our 2005 graduating, 2015 graduating class of 273 students. Jasmine has been admitted to Northern Kentucky University and has been awarded their Institutional Award of Excellence which is a four-year renewal scholarship for $5,000. Jasmine has also been admitted to Ohio University's Patton College of Education. Jasmine is a patient, empathetic, and caring individual with plans of becoming an elementary school teacher. <laughs> Ms. Wilson? Mr. Smith, if I might, yes. to say that Jasmine hopefully in her classroom we presented the uh, Gold Star Qantas Student of the Month, nice plaque, and a $25 gift certificate to Gold Star Chili. And Cecilia, as the Character's Key Award on behalf of the Green Hill Sport Qantas Club, gets the plaque, the uh, certificate, and there's a $35 gift certificate to Barnes & Noble Bookstore. Fantastic. <laughs> I just wanted my HR director to remember Jasmine's name because she's going to be an elementary teacher. <laughs> all right. You already have her on the list? Okay. All right. Okay. Next award is the Community Spirit Award. When you see these frames, there's a very nice company who gives up their uh, time and their efforts without asking us for anything, but they give it to us just because they love us and that's the Emeritus Life Insurance Company 
Is Mr. John Lucas present? Right here. Thank you. Come on, Mr. Lucas. Mr. Lucas is the Vice President and Associate General Counsel, and this award is presented to an organization or individual to recognize their significant contributions to the Wood City School District over a period of many years. So let's give Mr. Lucas a nice <laughs> Superintendent Smith, pleasure to see you again. Thank you. And everybody here, I just uh, want to say that uh, this is an award that uh, I'm accepting tonight on all the, behalf of all the employees at Emeritas, or the old Union Central, as many of you, you, you know. We still say Union Central all the time. We're getting there. Uh, but it, it's, a, it's, it's obviously a pleasure for us to participate in the community of Forest Park and specifically with the, the, the Wentonwood School District. And we've been doing the, the, the issue and the, the fun part of the framing since 2003. I looked it up today before it came over. So, and I've been in there 25 years, so I've been involved since 2003 in that program. So I want to thank you all for the honor. It means a lot to us. And I noticed Katie Landmeyer here tonight. She, her first job was with Emeritas, I think, part-time high school, something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> so when I walked in tonight, she walked up. So it was, it, was, it was great meeting her, too. So thank you very much. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Okay, got a special recognition tonight, very unusual, and um, this goes to one of our teachers at Primary South, Miss Elena Smith. Can you come up, Miss Smith? <laughs> Miss Smith is going to tell you a little bit why she did what she did, but she wrote this very nice book, and it's called A Loud Echo from the Hallway. And um, Ms. Smith is the author of the children's book that brings greater awareness about school safety. The Board of Education expresses its appreciation for advocacy for young students. So I know I inspired you, but who else? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I want to first thank the district for showing me so much support. I've received um, so many emails and teachers responding. So thank you all um, for your support. It's so inspiring, so encouraging. Um, I was inspired to write the book, of course, through my students. Um, after teaching a lesson, I really wanted them to know the importance of why we practice a lockdown drill and how to respond. So my goal is for the book to be used as a resource for teachers to know the procedures, know how to respond in the event of a lockdown, for students um, to have something to relate to. Um, we see on the media all different types of instances, um, which is unfortunate that we even have to write a book like this. But Ultimately, I just want to be proactive rather than reactive. Thank you very much, Ms. Smith. Right. And Ms. Smith, they can get autographed copies, right? For, uh, for, for a small fee. Right. Okay, the next award, Miami Valley Fandom for Literacy. Mr. Anthony Clancar. Wynwood's Middle School Educational Assistant. Congratulations to Mr. Kankar, who received this year's HAL Award for his work with Wynwood's Middle School Students Writing Group, The Head Cases. Wow. <laughs> this award is given to an educator who creates a program utilizing science from fiction literature to improve children's proficiency in science and math. Incredible. What inspired you? Uh, the group itself was just because I've always liked writing. That was something that was big to me while I was growing up. And having the opportunity to provide a chance for that kind of outlet, especially in middle school where people kind of lose the opportunity to write for fun. You just have to write papers now, and nobody likes that. And, uh, so being able to hold on to some of that love with it that opened up the opportunity to work with the Miami Valley Fandom for Literacy and specifically a convention that they run in the area that allowed some of the students an opportunity to share their writing with professional publishers and writers so that they could get that kind of feedback. And it's been uh, it's two years now that we've had the opportunities with that, and every year we've gotten very positive feedback. My favorite is still from this past year, Jason Sizemore, that runs Apex Publishing, telling me that uh, 
those readings are part of the reason that he bothers going to that convention anymore. <laughs> and also telling the writers that they made every professional author in the room incredibly jealous with what they were able to write in an hour. <laughs> so that was really nice to have. <laughs> Absolutely. Fantastic. One quick plug, we put out a book every year, and I have copies of them with me. Five dollars. Just seven. <laughs> All student work, it's really good. <laughs> Want to get a picture? Take a picture? This is our Vanna White, and she takes all of our stuff. <laughs> okay, so who came in? What do we have? Cecilia Dempsey. Where is she? Wow. <laughs> Come on. Bring your whole family up here. All right. All right. Folks, do you mind if I read about her again? All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Cecilia Dempsey is a kindergarten student at Primary South. Her teacher, Stacy Bannix, states, Cecilia shows integrity by telling the truth at school. She is very honest and wants to help others always be their best. We live in a world where integrity isn't always talked about or it hasn't been talked about nearly enough. We live in a world where the end justifies the means has become an acceptable thought for far too many. For Cecilia, she has shown integrity by doing the right thing at all times and in all circumstances, whether or not anyone is watching. That's the powerful piece. I applaud her for her efforts at such an early age as this trait that most of us aspire to achieve but rarely accomplish, Ms. Tanya Bray, Principal, Primary South. recognize another one of our teachers and this award is, is pretty interesting it's the Ohio String Teachers Association Young Teacher of the Year and do they give a one for the old teacher <laughs> All right. well you are a young teacher Mr. Felipe Morales Torres The Board of Education congratulates Mr. Morales Torres for being awarded this honor on February 5th at the Ohio Music Education Association Conference in Cleveland, Ohio. This award is given to a string educator with less than five years of experience who demonstrates exceptional potential in the public school orchestra setting. Mr. Morales. Here they go. Um, so uh, when I found out about this award, I was uh, at a table longer than my arms that was buried in paperwork and cash money because it was fundraising time. Um, and I had, I think, two concerts that week and a hundred other things going on. And the first thing I thought was, if this is Teacher of the Year, everyone is screwed. <laughs> um, I don't know that I'm doing everything right, but I'm doing everything that I can. Um, and the reason I do it is because, I, I don't think you can tell by looking at me, but I actually have the same exact background as most of my students in terms of household, in terms of money, in terms of all those things. And orchestra is what saved me. So that's why I do what I do. Fantastic. And the children absolutely love it. Thank you. Mr. Superintendent, members of the public, uh, you've seen some signs in the yards uh, talking about this being a great community in, in supporting the arts. 
his fingerprints are on that Absolutely. project. Absolutely, yes, So uh, he and, and some of the other uh, music staff uh, arranged for the case of the Winton Woods District to be known nationally and to bring some recognition to this community for its support of the arts. And I just wanted people here to know that of, about him. Powerful. Yeah. Miss Miranda, why don't you get a picture? I was going to say, can I please have a picture Absolutely. with Mr. Morales? <laughs> the young Mr. Morales. Okay, Miss Ashbrook, not here. Who's representing her? Oh, Dr. Holder. All right, very good. So I'm not, nobody wants to hear me, so I hope that turns that on. Oh, I think this is the point I'm making. That's she's <laughs> the white one is the one that works. I don't think it's on. Now, I, we can get that on. I'm not, I'm not going to, to speak. I'm going to introduce some folks, and they're going to speak, and we're going to end with a video. Mm -hmm. This is the point of she, she doesn't have the other one. Um, so as you know, I, I accompanied the band to China. Um, along with several other adults. Uh, Mrs. Karina Denny um, was there. Um, Brandon Smith, the percussion um, instructor for the band. And Mr. Jordan Habel is here tonight. He is actually Ms. Sashbrook's student teacher. Um, so a few gentlemen could come up. And then we have two um, students, two band members who were with us on the trip who would like to share um, their experiences, and they are Delaney Lindemann and Michaela Pitts. So come on, come on up. Um, they're not going to speak long. They're just going to share. Um, they're just going to share what the trip meant to them, and then we have some some gifts and some presentations. Can we get the background lights this row here? So we yeah, we're going to show that last. Okay. So I'll make sure we get it. Right. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Michaela Pitts. I'm in 11th grade. I've been in band since fifth grade. Um, this trip was truly amazing to have the opportunity to go out of the country for the very first time. Um, we did things that students my age have not done before. We climbed the Great Wall, which was truly amazing. Um, we played on the Great Wall. Uh, I ate totally different food than I'm used to eating, <laughs> <laughs> eating every day. Um, I had the opportunity to listen to others, um, to experience a different part of the world that is so different than ours. I had the opportunity to see um, how people live their life, which was so different. Um, students our age, that are from a whole different part of the world. Um, but I want to say thank you to the board for making this trip even happen. That was amazing for me. Um, thank you to Dr. Holden, Ms. Denny, Brandon, Mr. Hable, and all the rest of the teachers and parents that was with us on this trip. It was truly amazing. So, thank you. Hi, um, I'm Delaney Lindemann, and well, she sums most of it up, but I never thought that I would ever go to China. It's a huge country, it's so far away, 12 hour flight, but it was incredible. The sights were beautiful, the people were so welcoming. I never thought I would go to another country and people would want to come up and take a picture with you, and I felt like, we felt like celebrities because <laughs> There was 20 minutes where we were visiting, I think it was the Forbidden City, and they would just come up and just hug you and take a picture with you and just smile. They didn't speak English, but they were nice. <laughs> and it was just, it was a fantastic trip. And my favorite part about the trip was going to the other schools because we got to talk to students, have dinner with students, listen to their bands play, even if they were our instruments or Chinese instruments. And they were the sweetest people I have ever met in my life. And they tried to relate, they talked about our culture versus their culture, and it was the most amazing experience I could ever go on in my life. And I just want to thank everyone that made it possible, and 
especially the teachers, because they pushed us to go outside the box and outside of our comfort zone, and it was worth it. So, thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brandon Smith. I am a proud 2002 graduate of Winnipeg. Oh, I was going to say you were a senior. I was like, oh. Man. I wish I was a senior. The students yeah. keep telling me I'm old. And I look at them. Y'all crazy. Uh, but no, I, I had a wonderful time as a chaperone. You know, I, I kind of an honor and a privilege that Ms. Ashbrook and the district will let me even go as a, a chaperone because. Um, I look at it as I haven't graduated that long ago, so you know I still can uh, can relate to the students. But just this opportunity, it was wonderful to be able to connect with the students, to be able to relate to the students, to be able to interact with the students on a more personal level because we were away from home and a lot of them hadn't done it before. And it was an experience that you could watch the students kind of go, oh, wow, and this. And just watching that, it's something that you cannot get in the classroom. You cannot even get in the United States. So I definitely want to thank the board for, for making that possible because I know the board was an integral part in it, as well as the Shop Foundation uh, financially, just helping a lot of the students who would never have the opportunity, let alone with the school, but let alone personally to be able to go abroad and for such an extended time. You know, definitely the leadership that went with us, uh, Dr. Holden and Ms. Ashbrook and, and others, uh, they were very integral. And I think the students definitely appreciated talking with the students a lot. You know, I really want to find out what they're thinking and, and how they're reacting. And like I said, being an alum, I'm, I'm proud of my school district. You know, mm -hmm. I come back and I work with the band as a drum instructor because I'm proud of what Wynton Woods instilled in me. And it's nice to know that Wynton Woods is still instilling those type of values and those type of interactions in the students nowadays. And that's why I tell people, I'm from Forest Park. <laughs> I, grow, I grew up in Forest Park. And I will live in Forest Park <laughs> until thus saith the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> possible to follow the Brandon Smith. Uh, let me just begin by saying that I found myself in a position to be the luckiest student teacher in the face of the earth because Miss Ashburn called me about a month before my placement and said, hey, we're going to China. Do you want to come with us? It's like, oh, well, yeah, that'd be great. Um, but what I found on this trip was just how incredible the students are here at Wayne Woods. And um, as a student teacher, you get a, a very interesting perspective because you're you're not their full-time teacher um, but you're you're still older than them and have gone through more schooling and um, just getting to build relationships with the students and spending seven straight days in a foreign country eating interesting food um, you just you just build relationships and get to know the quality of the students here and coming from someone who uh, I mean I've just been here for four months it was just really an incredible experience to see how strong character and uh, just incredible people uh, go to these schools. Um, one thing that we were not concerned about but was on our mind was, okay, we're going to a foreign country, you know, are they gonna be able to listen to every single thing that we say, you know, when we say it? We're not, you know, we can't mess around here. And I was most impressed on how in this environment they stepped up their behavior and were just incredible um, representation of this district and of the United States. So yeah, thank you guys so much for everything. Thank you. Before the video, we just have some gifts that um, we brought all the way back from China that we were given. Um, So we had some um, wow. hmm. Thank you. Uh, silk writings that say, that says, Whit, actually says Wentwood's Warriors. That was hand done for us. And there's a duplicate for Mr. Martin. So Delaney is passing out pictures for the board of the band at the Great Wall, which you will see in the video. This is for our superintendent, Mr. Smith, that supported us all the way. Wow. So that's a gift from, gifts from, uh, Chongping Middle School number two in Beijing where we performed and you'll see that video and then this is a lovely sculpture porcelain sculpture of a sheep because 2015 is the year of the sheep and so we performed at Xi'an University so the sculpture was actually made by a student at the university 
Wow, well, um, just this gold bar. It's a gold bar. <laughs> That's right. And then Ms. Ashbrook isn't here, but we had framed both the invitations from the schools that where we attended. And she hasn't seen this yet. But we also purchased a um, an instrument where you blow in and it has a warrior in the front of it. So I can show Mrs. Denny? Can you play something? <laughs> and then last but not least, we would love for Dr. Holden to come back up. We have a gift for her. She, um, Dr. Holden spent so much time making sure, I know, um, that our students got to China this year. So we just want to thank her. this I just want to say one thing Mr. Havel and I were grabbing some dinner before the meeting and he said what was your most memorable part um, and my most memorable part was being with the kids so Michaela I think became my daughter um, and it was lovely and I, I will remember that so You know, I, I hear I heard the applause, but I'm a little concerned. So let's try one more time. They went to China. Okay. Totally different. Totally different.
<laughs> we need to allow a few seconds for the superintendent's eyes to adjust. Please bear with us. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Ms. Darcy, you didn't know you were going to do this, but you're always ready. Is Ms. Uh, Ginny Brooks here? Okay. Ms. Brooks donated $500 for camp expenses at Camp Joy for the Multiple Dis Disabilities Unit. The Board of Education greatly appreciates her generosity. Can you come up and say a few words of why it's so important for the kids that are our MD kids to have some experiences? Happy to talk about it even though I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Our um, students with multiple disabilities um, have uh, many challenges and they learn hands-on so experiencing outside of the classroom is very important just like the trip to China you learn things that you don't normally learn day to day in class so this is really generous and it's a great experience absolutely thank you very much mm -hmm. all right Madam President, that concludes my reports. Thank you, Superintendent Smith. And congratulations again for all of our students. A huge thank you to all of our chaperones, our administration, our local businesses, our teachers. Thank you so much. Okay. Board, there is no need for an executive session this evening, so we will move right into a five-minute recess. That way the folks that cannot stay with us this evening, you can dismiss yourselves. Thank you. Okay, we will now resume our regular board meeting. Next item on the agenda is our public comments. Mr. Denning. Mm -hmm. so, I'm Paul Denning. I'm here to, just to say thank, thank you very much. Um, I was in front of you a year ago with my demands. Yes. And my father, uh, who learned in command school, he's a career military, and he said you can, be, you can make demands once, but only if you're thankful twice. Okay, so this is my thank you to you. Just take one and pass them on. And each one of them is different, so you can kind of trade them around until you get the one that you want on here. <laughs> the one thing that all the exchange students always tell me is the passion that this school district has on here. And I've always said I could take my camera in 20 minutes, be able to document all the passion I want to. And that was over 20 minutes at the track meet at Wednesday. So just saying thank you for, uh, I still owe you another thank you. Okay. And, uh, and we appreciate just the wonderful year that our exchange students are having. That's it. Well, I, did, I just yeah. wanted to say I'm at, at the high school every now and then for a variety of functions, and I, I'm always quite pleased to see Nadina. Oh, yeah. As she uh, went one day with her service uh, dog, mm -hmm. other times with other situations and so forth, but seems seemed to be right at home. Oh, yeah. And, oh yeah, and our kids have been the local kids are benefiting from that as well. Absolutely. Yeah, well, and, and I have a fabulous picture. I meant to bring it with me, but I didn't. Um, and it shows Nadina. She's here addressing you, telling you her thanks. And uh, Dr. Smith, and I don't even know your first name. I brag about you all the time. Doctor, just Lord. call me. Just call me John. John. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, John. Um, no, Anthony. 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 Okay. <laughs> and Nadina's talking, and Dr. Smith is playing with the dog. So everybody's paying attention except for one person. <laughs> dog is resting his head on my lap, and I was in heaven. <laughs> yeah, it was, and and we're going to be doing this again next year. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank very you. much. Thank you, Mr. Denning. These are beautiful. Okay. That was the only public comment. So we'll move on to the next item on our agenda, which is the approval of minutes as attached. Board, unless you see any necessary changes to these minutes, a motion would be in order. Um, Madam President, I move that we uh, approve the minutes as presented by the Secretary. Second. It's been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Seymour, would you please call the vote? Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Pennycock? Aye. Mrs. Miranda? Aye. The motion passes unanimously. Our next item on the agenda is our treasurer's report. Mr. Seymour, you have the floor. 
As usual, it's always so exciting to hear this part of the board meeting, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> oh, year to date revenues for the uh, general fund for the year to date, we had 38.5 million, uh, with month to date revenues of 2 million. Most of that was in finalization of our real estate taxes and our final distribution. Um, on the uh, expenditure side, you can see that our year to date expenditures in the general fund are right at 31.3 million. And a little bit of good news was we're running around 4.5% under budget to date. Mm. Although, uh, at, towards the end of the year, expenditures do pick up because you have outstanding obligations that you, the treasurer's office tries to fulfill and clear up before we close the books for the year. Um, also, the district had an unencumbered balance of all funds of $20.3 million, of which the general fund was $18.8 million. Thank you, Mr. Seymour. Any discussion on this item? Okay. With no objections being heard, let the financial report for the month of March 2015 be submitted for audit. Next item, Treasurer's recommendations. Back to you, Mr. Seymour. Um, for our investments for the uh, month of March, we earned $2,879 in interest. And you can see the funds that were invested at 23 million for the month. So right now it doesn't pay to be a millionaire and try to invest in government CDs, does it? <laughs> Thank you. Madam President, I move that we approve the uh, treasurer's investment report for the month of March. Second. It's been motioned and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Seymour, please call the vote. Sure. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Pennycuff? Aye. Mrs. Miranda? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. 7.02, Mr. Seymour? Uh, as you know, you began the process at the organizational meeting of adopting your tax budget, and this is the uh, conclusion of that tax budget after it goes to the Hamilton County Budget Commission and to the Hamilton County Auditor's Office. The Auditor's Office sets your tax rates and your anticipated revenues for the year. This is the uh, acceptance by the auditor to levy all the taxes that you have voted by your voters. And this is your approval of those rates and anticipated revenues from those taxes, tax levies. Thank you. Board, is there any discussion on this item? Uh, Madam President, I just want to tell the public this is not a, uh, anything that raises taxes. No. This is something that a housekeeping item that we have to do every year and in layman's terms, let me say, check me if I say this wrong, Mr. Treasurer, but this is telling the county that we really want and need the money that we've already asked for and, and the local voters have approved over the previous decades. Yes, we filed our five-year forecast with the budget so they could see that we were not uh, overtaxing our constituents yeah. for our anticipated future budget years. Yeah. And Mr. Thank Seymour, this is the last step in the budget process, yes, right? Yes, this is the last step. You're concluded with the budget process now. Okay. Your next step is to uh, finalize this year's appropriation and begin the process of next year's budget. You work on three years at one time. Finalize the current year and work on the future year. Two years, I guess. So we need a motion. So, Madam President, I move to approve the resolution um, submitted by the Treasurer regarding um, all that stuff that he just read. <laughs> <laughs> Acceptance of the amounts and rates as yes. determined by the Hamilton County Budget Commission. I couldn't have said it better. Yes. <laughs> and I'll second that. <laughs> it's been motioned and seconded. Seeing as how we already had our discussion, Mr. Seymour, would you please call the vote? Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Pinnica? Aye. Mrs. Miranda? Aye. Thank you, Mr. Seymour. Motion passes unanimously. We'll move on to the next item, which are our reports from the superintendent. Mr. Smith, you have the floor. Yes, Madam President, for your information and possible discussion, there are um, seven um, <clears throat> titled events from various schools. And thank you, Madam President, for always including the alternative program because we have students there. Mm -hmm. uh, in our past opportunities, we only listed six, but you insisted that we have seven. So thank you very much. So for your information and discussion board, there are seven upcoming school events listed um, and also the BLT for all schools. Thank you, Superintendent Smith. 
We'll move on to 8.02. This is your first read of the textbook adoption. Dr. Holden, do you want to say something? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, board, uh, for allowing me a few minutes to talk about uh, textbook adoptions for next year. So I have some um, Vanna Whites here with me today <laughs> um, to help out. I do have some hard copies of these books um, that you can look at um, if you so desire. As we move along and get more technologically advanced, um, most of these are accompanied by an e-text that I, I can show you but not not here. So in your document, I'm going to start from the back and, and move forward. So um, the text that you see listed under Winton Woods High School are all um, really just um, smaller adoptions. Uh, there's a history of Western art class, um, a art history class, the history of Western art is the text for that. Um, you'll see a compa companion text in English and math for our ACT class. Um, Mr. Um, Torres uh, and uh, Ms. Hannah asked for some um, small books for um, orchestra instruction, specific string instruction, and then some music theory books. Mm -hmm. So we will be purchasing those. Let me flip the page here. Um, for math, uh, in addition to the ACT book, um, Mr. Breyer will be using a small text for his AP calculus class to go with the core's focus on nonfiction. So um, it's uh, nature's numbers. He tells me it's a riveting read. Um, it probably is. Um, so the students will have that to look forward to. And then in chemistry, we have an AP chemistry text and an accompanying test prep book for AP chemistry. Um, that course really replaces the Chem 2 course. Now we can finally do what's required to um, get it classified as an AP course. Mm -hmm. So that's the, those are the smaller um, adoptions. For um, social studies, I'll continue going from smaller to, to largest, smallest to largest. <coughs> social studies grades basically three through six. Um, in terms of getting textbooks aligned to the standards, Ohio standards, um, it's virtually a desert, really, in, um, in publishing in terms of a hard textbook. Um, what we finally found after going through the entire year is that we're going to use two texts at grade three and four. So they're called My World. Those are class sets. The teachers will reference those. Um, but every student will have a, um, really it's a workbook, um, and it is aligned to Ohio standards. That's about all you can find in social studies. Um, and so those workbooks are called Ohio Experience third grade and fourth grade, and we actually do have copies of those. those that's the My World. And then the Ohio Experience, I know Mr. Dorsey brought it, um, I thought, when he came. Um, so those are the texts that we will be adopting for grades three and four. And then in um, five and six, um, you will see uh, something very similar to that, so that our social studies teachers will have materials in hands. I must say that they've been working really hard to do the work without the right material. Um, and. Uh, they're troopers, so hopefully by putting the, the right material in their hands, um, we can really see some gains academically, particularly because there's a fourth grade and a sixth grade um, social studies assessment. Dr. Holden, just to make sure I understood you correctly, so the My World will be the class sets. My World is class sets. But then the actual workbooks that the students will is have. It's called the Ohio Experience, How correct. closely are those two aligned? Um, <coughs> Somewhat. My world is not exactly aligned to um, the Ohio standards. These are older textbooks. Um, out of all of the textbooks that they looked at, and, and Mrs. Wallace can speak to this because she worked heavily with them, they were just not satisfied with most of them, except my world. They said out of all of those, they can use that kind of day to day, but the real value um, is in that Ohio experience student workbook. 
because that is um, directly aligned. So the students will work like in both books? Correct. Like simultaneously. Correct. Because there are concepts that um, are introduced in my world that are appropriate and are part of the Ohio standards. But as a whole package, mm -hmm. it, it's not aligned as an entire package. Mm -hmm. Dr. Holden, mm -hmm. is the mismatch between what Ohio expects standards and the available publications, is that still the Texas effect of Texas being the major <laughs> player in textbook uh, purchasing um, and therefore modeling? I, I don't know that it's so much that as that um, I think Ohio was a little behind for a long time and Ohio is just now catching up so thereby publishers are just now catching up. Um, yeah. In social studies, in talking to other curriculum directors at different districts, this is the area, social studies grades three to six. I mean, it, it, like I said, it truly is a desert. Um, but we do have the, the workbooks which are aligned. Um, we will and keep looking for more robust um, text in, in the future. And all these books that you will be using, they'll meet all the learning objectives that you've identified Absolutely. for those grades. So Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And they come highly recommended by the teachers. Okay. Okay. Um, Let's talk math, grades six through eight. So we've just finished a year-long pilot with Connected Math 3, um, and that is at grades six through eight. So I'm gonna let, um, this is Elaine Georgia Stothis. She's one of our math coaches, and this is Dr. Tamara Raglan. Um, she is a math coach, currently math coach at grades seven through 12, and Mrs. Georgia Stothis at grades three through six. So, so they're going to speak briefly about um, CMP3. Um, so I just wanted to share some feedback regarding CMP3 from the teachers. We surveyed teachers, students, and parents, and we surveyed for Ohio's new standards alignment, mathematical practices alignment, real-world problem solving, writing extensions, cooperative learning opportunities, and rich math discourse opportunities. All of those were rated on a scale of one through five. Teachers rated a four or five, so they strongly agreed with all of those components of CMP3. Another component of CMP3 is the digital aspect, that's Math Excel. It's individualized for students, and that was also highly rated in terms of opportunities for students to work at their just right level. There are opportunities to have videos and extra practice, and students can continue to work on problems at their pace, and it doesn't count against them. It continues to support their learning at their just right level. So that's the overview of the surveys from the teachers in terms of students and parents. Parents were interviewed regarding Math Excel. We wanted to hear from parents do you feel this supports your students' learning? Do you feel your students more confident in learning? And they did express those remarks for sure. Um, in terms of student input, the theme sixth grade through eighth grade was math's interesting, I see connections to everyday life, and I like math overall. Those were the big themes in the survey data. So Dr. Raglan, would you like to add on to that? Yes, um, from the teacher's perspective, one of the teachers in particular at the seventh grade level said that he loved connected math. Um, one of the things that he encouraged, he was having a conversation with our fifth through twelfth grade teachers. They were all together for a ver vertical team opportunity back in February. And he was telling the high school and the middle school, or the IS teachers, that one of the benefits of connected math was his value added scores. He said that this year he expected his value added to increase. Last year he said that they didn't, they taught connected math, but they did not do it with integrity and fidelity. They supplemented with Engage New York and some other curricular source, resources. And so as a result, he believed that his value added scores suffered tremendously and that he expected his value added to increase this year. Of course, we don't have those results yet, but. I'm hoping that that would be the case. And because I've been at the middle school, 
all year. I can attest to um, the seventh and eighth grade teachers and the success that they've been having. Has every student, 90%, are they all getting A's? No, they're not. But the teachers will tell you and the students, you will see them, they're doing richer, meaningful work. Eighth grade students are making connections from tables to graphs to equations. The, they're doing rigorous work. And I would expect that our middle school students would be better prepared because I think Connected Math is a more robust program than the traditional um, direct instruction only. Now, do the students get direct instruction? They sure do. And as an instructional strategy, direction, direct instruction done well can be powerful because it has an effect size of 0.59 according to Hattie. However, Connected Math also allows for inquiry learning and problem-based learning, which our students need as well. I think in order for our students to be competitive, global citizens, they need to have all of that and connected math gives them that. The teachers don't have to go out and find rich resources <coughs> and problems. And I think that over time, we'll see a stronger math student, especially coming into Algebra One, which is a, a true gatekeeping course at the high Absolutely school level. Absolutely, it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So let me ask a, a, a clarifying question, um, because I remember hearing in past years, not, not too distant past, um, concerns, and I believe it was with respect to connected math, um, primarily feedback from parents. But if I'm hearing you correctly, the program in its entirety was not really used That's the way correct. it was designed. Is that correct? And That's so correct. when you kind of mix, you know, something over here with something over here, you don't necessarily know what you're going to get, and you're certainly not going to get the intended result. So if I'm hearing you correctly, now we are going to use Connected Math in its entirety with fidelity, with a robust plan, and we have some, some kind of a understanding of what we should be getting, and it should be better than what we've been getting in the past. Exactly. Now, are there another question, just to piggyback off of that, are there other school districts uh, that are using this that you've uh, looked at and studied their data to say, you know, We've seen this, you know, make a difference in the math scores, like around, I don't know who can answer that, are there? Yeah. Um, there is a, a school district we visited outside of Dayton. Jim Mamer is the teacher. He worked with the Connected Math crew in Michigan to help write the program. He's been teaching it for 20 years. So I did observe him last year and had discussion with him. He's one of the top rated math teachers in Ohio. Um, in terms of his district makeup, the socioeconomic status is about the same. He has children from all over his county coming in. He said it's the, the curriculum he would want for his own children. His child, um, one of his sons was in the same like area and he said, I spent every night reteaching the curriculum through connected math for my son and now he's an engineer. So um, that really speaks volumes. I would want my own child to be in connected math for sure because of the rich, robust problem-solving connections, the math discourse. It's really so aligned with the mathematical practices, and the mathematical practices are not just about mathematics. They're just about college and career readiness in general, the power to persevere, to attend to precision. There's so much greatness within those. Connected math is supportive. And they hold a special training in Wright State in the summer, and our teachers do attend that year after year for additional support. And especially with this new version of CMP3, it's helpful to have continued professional development. Mm -hmm. Jim, uh, Jim Mamer is at Springfield City. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Burns, <clears throat> one, of the, one of the pieces that we always have to explore, um, I've given Dr. Holden and Ms. Wallace the, the challenge about the fragmented pieces mm -hmm. that we try to put together. Uh, people try to find the silver bullet and try to find the easiest pick out instead of, as Dr. Raglan mentioned, using the whole program with fidelity. So we are on a different course. I will, I, will, I would like to add too that at the middle school level where I've been, those teachers have really brought, bought into Connected Math. 
and they are also very strong teachers. You cannot have teachers right. teach connected math well if they don't know the content because it is, it is a truly robust program. Um, I previously taught and was a math coach in Dayton Public and we implemented connected math there and it did not go well, but it was because we had teachers with the old one to eight license who did not have the strong math content and we have a high school licensed teacher at, at the middle school. We also have a middle childhood licensed teacher and two elementaries that are very committed to the program and they work in tandem with the middle and the high school licensed teacher. And so they're rocking and rolling there because they have totally bought in and they're willing to go to the professional development and do what's nec necessary to make sure their own math content is where it should be. I would concur with sixth grade as well. And as Hattie says, you know, when teachers collaborate and reflect on their practice, that's when you really affect student Absolutely. achievement. And it's interesting to hear the discussions that take place in those big PBT meetings in terms of instruction, in terms of student gains. And I can say absolutely sixth grade is committed as well. And you can you can see it. Read those seventh and eighth grade math TBT reports. You can see the results that they're having and the things that they're doing. Those reports are very rich, and I've seen other reports from across the district and other grade levels, and those are some of the richer TBT reports that I've seen. Uh, because the program is as robust as it is, um, and it's clearly going to be something different than what our parents uh, experienced when they were coming through. Is there anything that we can do to help parents help their students when they're home doing homework or what have you? That was a comment that a parent had listed on the survey mm -hmm. is that if the student didn't know how to do it then the parents wouldn't either and they asked for um, a sheet or a handout of some sort in order to to go home with the student. And so that is a conversation that I plan to have okay. with Mr. Sanker and the middle school teachers in order to, you know, to be able to help support parents. And so I think there is a way to do that, but we have not yet looked at that. But with this purchase comes Math XL, which is online 24-7 math practice and, and right. help. So um, th there's that available as well, um, which is different. So math practice, math tutorials that they can kind of just do over yeah. and over for practice with well, videos or whatever. It's not just for remediation. Mm -hmm. It's it's for all of that. It can right. remediate, but it can also accelerate. Like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Good. For any of our families who don't have online access at home, uh, you know, we don't want to leave anybody behind because they don't necessarily have that access. So we may want to think about how can we still help the parent to support the child if they don't have that that ab ability at home. Right, and, and I think that's great, I'm, I'm sorry, but for me, Mrs. Burns, it's also how do we help parents get that access? Yeah. Because what, what we're starting to see is the richness of the materials mm -hmm. that are available electronically. Mm -hmm. It's yep. really hard to replicate that. Right. Um, so right now, we're in, the, we're in certainly the paper kind of how do we help kids who need um, assistance and, and they do not have access. I'm sure you appreciate the concern that uh, Mrs. Burns is, is raising uh, when, when parents mm -hmm. who may not have, who may not remember their math instruction <laughs> as a kid with fond, fondness, yes, and, and this comes up and it's even more different, that that creates a buzz that could cause the most focused teacher to, for their knees to buckle just a little bit under the pushback from that um, and uh, as a teacher if something worked for me I'm sorry I'm not a teacher but if something had worked for me 10 years ago 20 years ago you I remember that it worked <laughs> for me and so maybe that's my fallback because this new stuff I'm not sure I, I fully understand or fully buy in so Mr. Superintendent and Dr. Holden we need to have conversations through the through the year so that the optimism that or the reaction that you addressed, Dr. Eklund, and that we have reason to believe that we're all lined up wearing matching sweaters on that topic. 
<laughs> as a school goes along. In conjunction with the community engagement coordinator, I know Dr. Holden and Ms. Wallace work closely with Ms. Denny. So creating those parent nights, mm -hmm. those parent-friendly right. invitations, uh, I think that's going to be our best, our best method because we have to get them away from being afraid of the work uh, to let them know that their children can be in incredible, excellent engineers or whatever. Mm -hmm. They can be superintendents. They can be whatever they want to be. <laughs> and I, I think that's the, that's the green light for us. Okay, great. I just wanted to add to that we've already been in discussions at the middle school of how we could better or repurpose the math lab, the math skills mm -hmm. class, which is already exists there to also support students with their skill level so they can be successful in the seventh and eighth grade math. And so using Math Excel could also be brought into that class as an extra added support as well. So the students mm -hmm. actually do get to use it on a regular basis during school time, even if they don't have the access mm -hmm. outside of school. So for just so you know, we are also doing a pilot this year for CME, which is Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2. More to come about that, as you might imagine. Um, you know, we can't, um, we cannot allow our limitations and our fears to, to limit uh, students. So yes, I'm, I'm gonna introduce, um, many of you know Adrienne Scott, teacher at the Intermediate School. She's here to talk a little bit about our literature adoption, K-5. Um, this is a big adoption, and I'm gonna be perfectly frank, it is a, it's different. It's different. Um, so there's a, it's a text set approach, which is what we have been doing. Um, but this actually has the resources. Um, there's a digital component. Um, what really sold me was um, the digital component has um, great uh, use uh, in terms of how we would work with our special ed students as well as our English language learners. Um, so it's different. I, w I want her to, to speak about it. She is doing a pilot of that kind of right now in her fifth grade classroom. And then um, Megan Bachna at Primary North is doing her own pilot of that at primary, at uh, grade uh, two at Primary North, so. Before Mrs. Scott speaks, I just wanna say that when Dr. Holden and I were in first discussions about adopting Ready Gen, we knew that it would be a shift for our teachers. And so we didn't wanna make the decision in isolation. So Dr. Holden had the great idea of taking a team of teachers out to see it. We talked to our Pearson representative who said, the closest district to you is Milford. Great, we can jump in the car, let's go. And so we took a team of teachers and we were very selective about which teachers because we wanted real time feedback. Teachers that we knew would be honest with us and ask us critical questions. And so I was one who thought, if Adrian Scott says it's okay, <laughs> then I know it's okay. So I want her to share her experience with Ready Jen. Well, I am very thankful that I had the opportunity to go and see um, Ready Jen in action at Milford. Um, I was really excited to go back because that's where I went to school, K-12. <laughs> and then I came here and now this is my family. <laughs> um, Ready Jen, let me go, back a little bit and talk about what's going on in the classroom, what was going on in the classroom before. We had a lot of things going on. Lots of teachers were teaching lots of different things. We, we were lacking continuity. We were lacking richness. We were lacking depth. Um, we tried lots of different things, but the other thing that we were lacking was, was materials. A good supply, a good resource of books that we could use in the classroom to really teach reading with authentic literature. And so when the, it came to me that we were going to consider adopting something new, because we did have um, reading streets, but we weren't really using it with fidelity, and we know what happens when we don't use a program with fidelity. Um, when it came to me that it, reading streets um, contract was up and it was time to buy something new, I was excited. <laughs> I was really excited because I see a need for um, continuity. That's what we're missing in our district. Kids come, these kids know this because they had that great teacher. I like to ask the children, I say, who taught you that? And they'll, they'll all raise their hand. This, in, 
10 people will say, Mary Barnes, you know, or, you know, and then other kids will say other things, or they won't say, you know, and I know Mary Barnes is doing this, but I don't know that everyone is doing it. And that's why I saw a need for a program. And um, Dr. Holden spoke about a program as opposed to a basil, and I love that idea because it does provide, ReadyGen provides us with a rigorous, authentic novel that my kids, who are mainly ESL, of my 75 students, or 70 students, about 60 of them are ESL, love it. They are loving every single second of it. And they're raising their hands to answer questions and they don't even know English very well. You know, I mean, they're, they, they're just so involved in really reading deeply and understanding the literature. It will be a shift for our teachers. It will be a shift in what they, what they know. It does require a lot of preparation, advanced preparation, but that's because it is um, for the 21st century. You know, we can't write on the chalkboard anymore as we go. We can't answer questions on the chalkboard. We need to have things prepared, visuals prepared. Um, it is wonderful in the sense that it is uh, an electronic, a digital program, so the kids can actually access most materials at home. So, um, if you have any questions, I don't know if I've covered everything you wanted yeah, me to they say. They don't need to access the digital materials. They, they, they can. can. So we have materials for everyone. Well, not right now. Not during the pilot. We are wearing the copy machine out. But even <laughs> the kids that are reading the book, our, the book we're reading is called um, Night of the Spade Foot Toad by Bill Hartley. That's the first book in the fifth grade unit. They love it, so I'm so excited. Um, the kids who are reading from copies are just eating it up. And as a matter of fact, they're so excited because they can write on theirs and the other kids can't. So. <laughs> you know, um, Mrs. Scott mentioned Reading Street. Reading Street is not aligned to the core, so it, it is absolutely necessary for us to adopt something new. Um, again, what, what really sold me was finally my kids, when I'm gonna call them my kids, are getting the same material mm -hmm. and the same expectations that, as kids at other schools around the city. Yes. They are capable. They will act sometimes like they are not. They are capable, and we are capable, so we have to step up um, for them. This program is heavy in writing. I mean, some of the, uh, the writing um, that we have seen is amazing, and the lesson that I watched at Milford um, was literally the teacher going over maybe one paragraph of a text in such depth that these children knew it. They knew what it meant to do a close read. They knew the vocabulary. Um, and it was quite exciting. And so, you know, I had a discussion with a teacher that I really respect, and, and, and she said, you know, I don't know. I don't know that our kids have that kind of stamina. And, and it wasn't all, I mean, they were moving. So I said, well, I thought they were moving a little bit. She was like, I don't know. And I said, well, our kids need that kind of stamina. That, that's probably what puts them, you know, behind everybody else is because we don't help them develop these skills. Mm -hmm. um, so one comment that, that Megan Bachman from Front End North mentioned, that she said she did not realize that the questions she was asking her children were at such low levels. Mm -hmm. surface, just on the uh, surface. That's what we've been doing so much of, just mm -hmm. on the surface. None of the deep, rich work that all of our kids can do and love to do and are proud of themselves for being able to do. It would strike me that if you're doing this kind of uh, in-depth reading program at the lower grades, that that would have a longer lasting effect, um, a, a domino effect, if you will. So by the time we're talking six to eight or nine in high school and whatever, um, those types of things can kind of grow. Um, so it, it it begs the question, I hear you talk about um, depth and richness and robustness mm -hmm. um, and stamina. Are our teachers ready for it? It's very different than what they're used to. Very I've different. heard that word they're probably four or five times <laughs> now. There's so. a considerable yeah. amount of PD. Okay. You know, there, there's a routine, and, and students are taught routines. Um, so they're... There's a shift. You know, you're gonna, you can't do, you cannot do what you did before. Mm -hmm. 
So the literacy coaches, Dr. Hoffman is the primary and Mrs. Flanagan at um, ES and IS, have been working with the teachers all year, kind of setting, setting the stage mm -hmm. for this. Um, all uh, ELA teachers were, had a required session on our February 6th PD day um, about Ready Gen. Um, so we're gonna get materials for them um, once we have board approval so that when they leave at the end of the year, they have the first two um, with them, uh, the first two units, and then there's a significant amount of professional development. Here, here's here's the, the, the shift, um, of course, Dr. Holden puts all this in my ear and it stays in my head like all the time, kind of locked in. But they have a different passion about the work. Mm -hmm. And once you get the passion for the work, the rest of it becomes the other piece. Mm -hmm. So uh, you guys have heard presentations about curriculum and curriculum standards, but it doesn't feel the same. It feels like we really are owning the work and it's our job to make sure that our kids get it because they deserve it. So, thank you very much. So, one more question. Um, the Ready Gen, you said there's going to be some, um, you know, the, the rigor is going to be different. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is somebody going to set up like the lesson plan so that the mm -hmm. teachers will know what it is they're doing, when they're doing it? Yes. I mean, so that Absolutely. that rigor is built in along with some critical thinking, we, is we, what we I heard. We knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. I was ready, Dr. Johnson. <laughs> so, one of the great things that we saw in Milford. <laughs> Not only did our teachers have the experience of seeing it in action, but we had a debrief with their literacy coach to kind of walk us through, how did you start this? What questions did you, what push, pushback did you have? And so one of the things that she said was a saving grace for them is that they planned out each unit before they taught the unit. So our coaches have already been asking Dr. Holden, when are we getting the teachers here to start unit one? When can we plan over the summer? Teachers have already said, we're going to get together as a team. Grade five is already planning unit one, and we haven't even given them all of the materials. So before every unit, the coaches will facilitate a planning opportunity for the teacher teams to answer the questions, to pace it out, and then they will debrief after that unit to talk about what worked and what didn't work as we prepare for unit two. Milford was very upfront with us. There are six units, five or six units in each grade level, but they said you won't get through all of them if you're doing it with fidelity because it takes time. It's a learning curve for our students and for our teachers. So we're going in saying if we get to four, you know, literacy is cyclical. So it's okay. If you get through four, our kids are in good shape. Mm -hmm. And the next year you add another unit. So we're ready. Okay. The teachers will be ready. Good. Miss uh, Ms. Wilson just uh, alerted me we have some new teachers. Uh, they're separate. And the new you're still with us, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I'm finished. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I just want to thank you. This will um, bring us almost to exactly where we should be. Absolutely. So That's I good. appreciate it. That's Mr. Two, uh, two comments or questions, Dr. Holden. Where can the board find the uh, sample <laughs> copies between now and next month? You can find them. I will leave them in Ms. Jordan's office. How's that? Okay. Um, thank you. Yeah, so what you see here. And then and then if you're looking for something, I also have some documents that explain like Ready Gen versus Reading Street and just mm -hmm. to give you some information. Um, if you'd like, I'd be happy to send that to you in electronic format. Well, you're proposing over a dozen books. That's probably more than this board member can get through in, in the month. Um, but can parents, members of the community, absolutely take a look at the books too? Absolutely. Yes. That's the plan. Did you get that on recording? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm making a point here yes. because a gentleman said today, wouldn't it be nice if the board had the courtesy to advise the public and parents what they plan to do rather than make all decisions behind closed doors, unquote. Right. Policy 25. And I just, <laughs> that person's not here, but I understand the sentiment uh, behind it. Um, what I was paying particular attention to the people that you had speaking, the, the amount of parental input mm -hmm. already mm -hmm. to the choice or to the, uh, the choices that were available, um, reactions from other school districts uh, going there, mm -hmm. and the, the proposals, uh, and are just that, proposals are available to anyone in the public who wants to come in and sort of check it out like a lending library, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, and we will then make our decision next month. Yes, sir. So.
So be informed. Very good point, Mr. Thank Kennecott. You. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hall. Thank you, Board. Okay. 8.03. Yes, uh, Madam President, there are several policies that are revised and new, and I'll go through them quickly. 1530, Evaluation of Principles, 2210, Curriculum Development, 2510, Adoption of Textbooks, Mr. Pinnacuff, uh, 2520, Selection of Instructional Materials and Equipment, 5330, use of medications, 5336, care of students with diabetes, 5460, students' graduation requirements, 5460A, students' physical education waiver that the board just adopted, thank you very much, uh, 1419, administration group health plan, 1619, administration privacy protections of self-funded group health plans, 3419, professional staff group health plan, professional staff privacy pro protections of fully insured Group Health Plans 3419, 3619, Professional Staff Privacy Protections of Self-Funded Group Health Plans, 4419, Classified Staff 4419.02, Classified Staff for Privacy Protections of Fully Insured Group Health Plans, 4619.01, Classified Staff for Privacy Protections of Self-Funded Group Health Plans, and finally, these are all first reads, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Board, any discussion or comments on these first reads? Madam President, I, there is one of the draft policies in there that I wanted to make special note of because I think it's of special interest to parents. If you've ever had a student in high school or you will have a student in high school, you will know that the scheduling of physical education is always an issue uh, for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to keep flexibility in the schedule wanting to dress casually but not wanting to take a shower, on and on and on. Sure. But So uh, for decades, students have taken physical education in the summer in order to take care of that requirement and sort of clear the deck so that they could take the full slate of academic courses. What will be, what is being proposed for our consideration, so we want to hear from you. What is being proposed, and I will read just a sentence or two, the school district shall excuse from the high school physical education requirement any student who during high school has participated in interscholastic athletics, marching band, or cheerleading for at least two seasons. That's a big deal if you're going to have a high school student. Uh, I won't read all, all the rest of it, but be aware that this is under serious consideration by this board if you have an opinion. Uh, especially if you like the idea, or your 13-year-old um, likes the idea, let one of us know uh, between now and this time next month. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Pennycuff. Any other discussion on those? Okay. We will move on to the superintendent's recommendations. Personnel Schedule 9.01. Um, recommendation is to approve the personnel schedules as presented. Schedule A, resignations and retirements. Schedule B, certificated employment. Schedule C, support staff. Schedule D, extra duty and supplemental employment. Schedule E, leaves. And finally, Schedule M, termination of a classified employee. Board, a motion would be in order. I might make a motion to approve the personnel schedules as presented. Second. A motion has been moved and seconded. Board, is there any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Seymour, please call the vote. Sure. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Penica? Aye. Mrs. Miranda? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. 9.02, Mr. Superintendent? Yes, uh, Madam President. I really want to take a minute to talk about um, how diligent uh, Dr. Holden and Ms. Wallace have been with the summer school offerings. Uh, we have made a serious shift about how to get kids ready for the next opportunity. Uh, we know that our failure rate for Algebra 1 is higher than we, it should be. So we have uh, proposed to have a pre-algebra uh, opportunity for students in the summer. Also, our students in third grade will get six opportunities to transition to fourth grade as opposed to five. Uh, we're using the MAP test as another opportunity. And then finally, uh, in the past, students that were transitioning through the middle school 
if they failed three courses, they were not eligible to uh, go to summer school. Um, that created a hardship for some students because they're going to be older going into the high school. Now we're going into a standards-based system uh, with the standards being the optimal piece that says you are trying to work on these standards as opposed to taking a whole course. It's almost impossible. If I failed Algebra 1, to take a full Algebra 1 course in the summer, it, it won't work. So we're actually working on the standards and the teachers will sign off on the standards. As they sign off on the standards, that's when the kids can start moving through the process. And we're going to look at the eighth grade students this year to look at some of their scores. Students that are barely making it through that eighth grade transition, they're going to get the first opportunity to have a pre-algebra assessment. Mr. Lewis, so, can I add something? Yes. We will, all eighth grade students plus those seventh graders going into algebra as an eighth grader and those sixth graders going into algebra as a seventh grader um, in May will be taking the Iowa test of algebra readiness. Hmm. So those results will allow us to populate this class that Mr. Smith is talking about for incoming ninth graders and those um, seventh and eighth graders who perhaps don't score um, at a level where they might be successful in algebra, um, then we'll have a discussion with them about what their options are. But this will give us some, some real data so that we're just not throwing students blindly out Absolutely. there and then you know, wondering why they um, they don't succeed. So that's coming in May. It really wouldn't even be a wonder, it would be more of a prediction. Right. Meaning, mm -hmm. I struggle in math, and so you're not giving me any more support, so what will I do? Struggle in math. Mm -hmm. And I think that when we do it with fidelity that we've mentioned, we will have young people who will enjoy taking math as opposed to trying to escape from it because they need four years. Okay. So um, the 9.02 is the summer school offerings to the recommendations to approve the summer school offerings as presented. I move to approve. Second. A motion would be, I'm sorry, a motion's been moved and seconded. Mr. Seymour, would you please call the vote? Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Penica? Aye. Mrs. Miranda? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. 9.03? Yes, uh, I'm going to just say one thing about 9.03, uh, Madam President and Board. Um, the middle school, um, principal has been very, very committed to improving writing. And so we're working diligently on how to get our kids up to speed with the writing opportunities. He has a great proposal on the table and uh, Dr. Holden and Ms. Wallace are working closely with him to figure out how this is going to create this writing experience so that young people can enjoy writing as opposed to trying to escape from it. Mm -hmm. So we're, we've, we've solidified two major courses now the math, they won't escape anymore, and the writing. So if we get the rest of it rodeoed in, I think we'll be absolutely fantastic. But that's some of the creativity from Principal Sanker. He brought it to the table, and then we figured out how to make it work. So there you go. Fantastic. Board of motion would be in order. I'd like to make a motion to approve the Winton Woods Middle School uh, course of study as presented. I'll second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Seymour. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Penica? Aye. Mrs. Miranda? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. 9.04. Yes, it would be my pleasure to read the 9.04, the resolution of National Teacher Appreciation Week, May the 4th through 8th. Whereas the week of May 4th through the 8th, 2015 is National Teacher Appreciation Week, and whereas public schools have been the gateway to success for every generation of Americans, and whereas a strong, effective system of public school education for all children and youth is essential to our democratic system of government, and whereas public schools are at work shaping the future for a whole new generation of young Americans who will take their places in education, business, industry, and government, and whereas no other profession has so great an opportunity to make a lasting and life-changing impact on the lives of so many, and whereas teachers empower, inform, teach, enlighten, share, enrich, create, motivate, mentor, and touch the minds of those students that are entrusted with, and whereas it is appropriate for the Wentwood City School District to pay tribute to the teaching profession as a whole and to recognize teachers for their dedication and for their commitment to challenge 
and educate the youth of our schools and community. Therefore, be it resolved that the Wintonwood City School Board of Education formally designates the week of May 4th to the 8th as National Teacher Appreciation Week. I've memorized that. Thank you. <laughs> I think before we make the motion to approve this, it would be appropriate to bring up our new teachers in the audience so that you can introduce yourselves. Fantastic. Come on down. <laughs> um, I'm Rachel Sauer. Um, I'm a, I will be graduating from Miami University in three weeks. Um, and Congratulations. I will be teaching, thank you. I'll be teaching kindergarten at Primary North. Fantastic. Fantastic. Hi, I'm Marissa Gilio. Um, I graduated from Miami in December and will be teaching first grade at Primary South. Good. Good. Right. I am Katie Henry and I graduated in December as well and I'll be teaching third grade at the elementary school next year. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Don't they all sound all enthusiastic? I know. <laughs> so we'll bring you back in like uh, late still May. And see excited. how you feel. You're still being excited. <laughs> I detect a Miami takeover. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Miami has an urban cohort, um, and so a couple of them participated in it, and um, we also have a bilingual candidate. Um, Good. Absolutely. Fantastic. Wow. Thank you for being here this evening. Yeah. Okay. A motion would be in order. Madam President, I move to approve the resolution for the National Teacher Appreciation Week of May 4th through 8th as presented. I'll second. It's been motioned and seconded. Any discussion? I just want to say to the teachers who are brand new, I've been teaching for 30 years and I still love it. So, <laughs> and you'll still love it. Okay. Mr. Seymour, would you please call the vote? Dr. Johnson. Aye. Mrs. Burns. Aye. Mr. Pennycut. Aye. Mrs. Miranda. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. We'll move on to 9.05. Yes, the School Nutrition Employee Week official proclamation. Whereas nutritious meals at school are an essential part of the school day, and whereas the staff of the district school meals and nutrition department are committed to providing healthful, nutritious meals to the district's children, and whereas the men and women who prepare and serve school meals help nurture our children through their daily interaction and support, whereas the week of May 4th through the 8th is School Nutrition Employee Week. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Wintonwood City School District expresses its deep appreciation to those valuable employees and commends their good work on behalf of our children, adopted this 27th day of April, 2015. Fantastic. I move to approve the resolution. A second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Other than a huge thank you to our nutrition employees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Mr. Seymour. Dr. Johnson. Aye. Mrs. Burns. Aye. Mr. Pennycut. Aye. Mrs. Miranda. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. 9.06. Yes, Madam President and Board, Dr. Johnson has just been dying to read one of these resolutions. So, <laughs> Dr. Johnson. Okay, I better put my eyes on. <laughs> there you go. Okay, this is the. Uh, resolution for the National School Nurses Day. Uh, whereas it is proper to acknowledge school nurses for the professional contribution, encourage and support a healthy environment in education for our nation's youth and for the students and staff of the Wintonwood City School District, and whereas school nurses provide a vital role to the institution of public education through their unique expertise for managing primary and preventive health care, and whereas school nurses are diligent, motivated, caring professionals who influence and promote a healthy school environment that is safe and conducive to learning, be it therefore resolved this 27th day of April 2015 that the Wintonwood City School District Board of Education hereby recognizes the continued effort, commitment, and resolve of school nurses to make a difference and proclaims May the 6th, 2015 as National School Nurses Day in the Wintonwood City School District, adopted this day, 27th day of April 2015. Excellent, Dr. Johnson. You're welcome. Board, a motion would be in order. Madam President, I move to approve the resolution of the National School Nurse Day, May 6, 2015, as presented. I'll 
second, then I think Dr. Johnson ought to read all of our resumes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, been, <laughs> <laughs> it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? No. Mr. Seymour, please call the vote. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Burns? Aye. Mr. Pennycuff? Aye. Mrs. Moran? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Mr. Superintendent, you now get a break. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. We now move to Mr. Pennycuff to share the legislative report. Mr. Pennycuff, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President, members of the board. Uh, two items tonight regarding the le legislative report. Um, there's been a lot in the news lately about the uh, General Assembly's uh, work on the budget, um, the, the biennial, biennial budget, uh, also known as House Bill 64. There was some news recent, last week, in fact, Good news, it said in the, in the paper that school districts are going to be okay. Um, well, maybe, maybe not. Uh, one of the, the things that the House did that um, the Senate had not done, the House in its version um, prevent, put in a provision, and they passed it last week, that would ensure that all districts are held harmless as a result of the phase-out of the tangible per personal property tax. And board, you must keep in mind every time that the state uh, has said that they are phasing out some revenue stream that comes to schools, they promise a gradual or they promise a um, some sort of hold harmless mechanism. And every time within a year or two or three, the next legislature says, well, if this thing is going to be phased out over 30 years, let's just go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. So the fact that the House put it back in is good news. You can't take it to the bank yet. It's better than the House not doing that. So the, the Senate version is very um, stingy. With the, in fact, we would be losing. The House uh, is somewhat uh, more to our liking uh, on this phase. There, there are dozens of other, other features. I'm just highlighting this. So. Uh, the Senate and the House will begin to work together, and frankly, we won't know until the reps of the Senate and the House go into the proverbial closed door, the smoke-filled room, whatever you want to call it, and what comes out on the 29th of June will be the real, the real thing. Uh, but this is interim uh, good news, um, but don't get your hopes up too high. And finally, board, rather than taking you through all 12 items that were in the House version, I've just got to give you a bit of entertainment. This is a genuine article in the House bill. When I read it, I thought, you just have to be kidding me. The backdrop is when school districts such as ours, when we have extra excess property, and we do, we have, in order to sell it, we have to offer it first mm -hmm. to a community school or charter <coughs> school. That's the law. Here is a provision in the House version, I kid you not. The House version of Senate Bill 64, get ready to laugh, um, institutes a two-year window where a school district wow. does not have to provide right of first refusal to a community school if the school is locate, located next to a professional sports hall of fame. What? Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> How many schools qualify for that exactly? One. Probably one district who got to his or her representative. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's uh, there's a major article in the paper about um, laws are written based upon who shows up. Yes. Somebody showed up, buttonholed his or her representative, mm -hmm. and got this line item in because it pertains to some, some one district in Ohio. So here are opportunities to do what's right for students. We're on our uh, local superintendent uh, reminded me last week that the state of Ohio is in its fifth funding model in nine years. We don't know what the model will be as of July 1. Um, stay tuned. That's the end of my report and entertainment. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pennycuff. I'm glad you mentioned that article that laws are based on who shows up. I saw the same article, maybe it's a different author in our OSBA journal yeah. that came out this month. 
Okay. Mr. Cleary is absent this evening due to some health issues. We send our well wishes in hopes that he gets better real soon. So we'll move on to our next item, which is comments from members of the board, or I'm sorry, board motions, recommendations. Board, are there any members who would like to make a motion or a recommendation this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on to comments from board. Dr. Johnson, we'll start with you. Okay, well I usually like prepare something, so this is right off the cuff, so I'm usually longer when I talk from my heart. Yeah. Uh, anyway, no, I'm just kidding. Well, no, I'm not, that's really true, but um, I'm gonna be short. I just wanted to um, thank the people who um, took our uh, students to China. We really appreciate you when you take care of our babies and you know they come back safely and there was a good report. So I uh, just wanna uh, say thank you to the chaperones, those student chaperones or uh, young adults that went along and the teachers that went along, uh, just say thank you to them. Um, and um, to Dr. Holden and to the team, uh, Danielle Wallace, and, and to your team, the, the book presentation, I'm an educator. I feel like if you're meeting the learning objectives, I'm happy, but this is probably the best book presentation that I've ever had. You know, really, it really was, and I, I think that uh, that deserves some recognition to say that um, that was, uh, I, I like the way you did it. I like the way that you brought in the people and gave us an opportunity to ask a few questions. Now, will I know everything about those books? I think the best person to decide that are the people who are gonna teach out of them and if they meet the learning objectives and you know, you're trying to build everything toward the core standards and that's what's important and making sure that the rigor is there, you know, so, um, but I do appreciate that you all did such a wonderful uh, presentation. Um, I, I do wanna say too that uh, we are coming up on uh, May the 5th and we are getting ready to have a vote and it's not a us or a them thing. It's, it's all of us, I mean, it, it, it's we, you know, so, um, this is a wonderful school district. I can't go without mentioning uh, Brandon Smith. He graduated with my daughter in 2002, and um, he 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 kind of summed it up. You know, I'm I, I'm from this place. I love this place. I come back to serve the community that I uh, graduated from. And it was a good school then. It's a good school now. It's a good school district, and it is what we make it. We can talk about problems all day long, all day long. Anybody can point out the problems. It's the solutions that we're looking for. So if you have some solutions, let's come together with those solutions. Um, but I, I, I do feel like there is a wave in the air and I like it. It's a good wave, okay? Um, but you can always stand in, in the way of a good wave and it blow you right by, it blows right by you. So I'm just saying that um, I think we're on a, on a good place, we're on a good path. You've got some teachers who are excited, who are ready to move. And uh, I just want to say thank you for that. Like I say, I've been teaching for 30 years, and I still love it. Uh, I, I wake up every morning, and I don't say, God, i got to get dressed and go to that place. I mean, I do. I still love it. And I think that when you find something you love, you never work a day in your life. You just get paid to do what you love. So, you know, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you all for uh, actually working with our students. So, that's that's very well yeah. said. Madam Vice President? I actually have nothing. I think Dr. Johnson took everything that I had to say and she said it so eloquently. So I am going to be mindful of time and I'm going to pass the baton. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Pinnikoff. Thank you very much, Madam President. A couple of things. I wanted to compliment the, the uh, high school for the uh, spring musical, the, the, the Music Man. Um, and yeah. the place was full of small kids it was, it was a program that um, small kids would like to, you know, all the music was good. Um, and uh, the, the kids, including my own grandkids I brought, brought for the first time, wanted to see the actors and wanted to have pictures taken with the actors out in the lobby. So it was a nice evening, so uh, th thanks very much. Um, members of the board, I look forward to seeing you and uh, the senior staff at the, this, um, season of uh, honors nights, uh, end of year uh, concerts, end of year uh, art galleries and so forth, all the end of year activities. Um, it is really a nice time, so I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pinnikoff. Um, I'd also just like to encourage the parents and community members um, in our Wynton Woods City School District 
Um, there's a couple issues on the ballot for May 5th. It is eight days from now until Election Day. So please know your issues. Please vote. Get out and vote. It's, it's a right that we have as an American to vote, and we should all exercise it more often. Mr. Superintendent? Yes, Mr. Uh, Pennycuff has re-inspired me again about this <laughs> rowing piece because we are going to have a rowing team eventually. Um, he just gave me an article that uh, there was an event at East Fork Lake, and it says the event features 16 clubs, including teams from Chicago, St. Louis, Indianapolis, Pittsburgh, even one from Oklahoma City. Local clubs participating include Cincinnati Country Day, Claremont Crew, Great Miami, and the Cincinnati Junior Rowing Club. The Cincinnati Junior Rowing Club students hail from high schools around the area, including St. Xavier, Walnut, Mount Notre Dame, St. Ursula, and Ursuline. We're not going to be part of the Cincinnati Junior Rowing Club because we're going to have our own team, okay, right on the waterway. I'm excited about it. It is going to happen. Stay tuned. Thank you, Mr. Pennycott. Mr. Seymour, any comments from you, sir? No, thank you very much, sir. Okay. All right, next item are the comments from our associations. Mr. Lanier, you are here tonight. Do we get the pleasure of you speaking as well? Uh, thank you, Madam President. All right. Mm -hmm. Board administrators and very dedicated student teacher. Uh, extremely <laughs> impressed, uh, Ms. Wilson. I hope you have his name down. That's, uh, that's a great, um, that, that's great dedication there. Hey, uh, before I uh, mention some of the things that I, I uh, prepared tonight, I do want to say uh, just, uh, man, uh, you're on fire, Dr. Holden, and uh, Ms. Wallace, uh, very impressive. I, I remember sitting here back I believe it was September, and then also at a WWTA meeting in October, one of the things at the Student Achievement Committee and then at our own union meeting we talked about was really trying, uh, one of the things on our wish list um, was coming up with a, an aligned, supported, uh, dedicated K-6 uh, program, and man, we have sure taken uh, steps, uh, major steps towards that. Uh, it, it, that's the best news I, I, I've heard in, uh, in weeks. Uh, just extremely excited. That was one of our wish list uh, things, as I, I know, as a community and uh, as a group of teachers. Thank you, uh, board for uh, and administrators for uh, putting that together. Uh, I still remember Mr. Smith, uh, the community members, uh, questioning Dr. Holden and Mr. Smith, and Mr. Smith's like, uh, uh, Dr. Holden will take care of it, and Danielle, she will, uh, she will too, and uh, sure enough, thank you. Uh, this week, I, I don't have anything as eloquent to read as uh, Mr. Smith does, unfortunately. I wish I did, but uh, this week uh, is National Principals Week, uh, with uh, this Friday being National Principals Day, and uh, I just wanted to uh, say a few words honoring uh, our great principals uh, and uh, leaders, administrators in this district. Uh, first of all, um, I, I like that Mr. Smith mentioned the alternative school because one of my first memories here as a uh, teacher 11 years ago is a uh, lady by the name of uh, Mrs. Uh, Brenda Hodges Davis, who is the alternative school principal, and just how welcome. Uh, she made her students feel, made myself feel, uh, and just uh, it takes a it takes a special person to uh, work and be successful. Uh, a lot of patience with uh, students that struggle in the traditional school, and just I mean she makes the lie their lives so much better. Uh, what do we have over there? Eighty last time I I heard. Uh, she makes their lives better, and uh, she helps make it smoother in, in the secondary level, also for the students there. Just uh, just wanted to take a moment to uh, thank her for what she's done for uh, this district uh, and all this week. And uh, uh, 
and then just you know mention something um, you know going back uh, I, I still remember one of my uh, high school principals uh, Mr. Novak and uh, the, the great lesson he taught me and uh, you know I, I thought it was pretty special back then and maybe <laughs> too much uh, so today but uh, I, th I really thought it was uh, with my mom being on the school board and all and at first I, th I, I, I thought maybe I could do some things that I probably shouldn't have I still remember talking back uh, some <laughs> teachers I know imagine that I I, I still struggle with those issues sometimes today but uh, yeah, it taught me a very valuable lesson and he brought me into the office and I was you know, whining and whatever uh, and he's like you know Brad I do not care that your mom is on the school board uh, you're still going to serve those five days of detention for talking back to uh, your chemistry teacher and that was a great great lesson of equality and fairness and just um, really uh, helped set me up and, uh, and set me straight and I thank him uh, for that to this day now uh, I think going on with eight days to go I am so looking forward to uh, May 5th and cannot wait to see the results of the hard work of the people here and what we've been putting into this uh, together we could do so much and I greatly look forward to seeing the results of that on Tuesday night and enjoying them uh, together so uh, wishing everybody the best and uh, once again thank you Fantastic. thank you mr. Lanier do we have a representative from OPC Miss Wilson okay all right and we've already established that there's no need for executive session so thank you all for your attendance this evening. Thank you, student teacher, for staying the whole night with us. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. Awesome. Sorry about that. Okay. My thoughts came through.